Recently, we got a look at some captivating images as Webb peers back toward the origin of everything. The James Webb Space Telescope JWST project offered the clearest and most detailed infrared pictures of galaxies far away. This would allow scientists to look into the past and help them figure out how the universe started. Since it left Earth more than a million miles away and spent months getting ready to gather information from the farthest reaches of space, the camera has already started sending NASA full-color pictures. We can see more of space than ever before with the telescope because it shows us stars and galaxies as they were 13 billion years ago. That was the start of a groundbreaking NASA project that has been making stunning pictures ever since. The JWST just shared amazing pictures that are very clear and full of details. The JWST isn't just there to amaze us, though. Experts at NASA say that its work will help us understand both the world now and how it happened in the past. What new facts and figures do the JWST and the Hubble Space Telescope give us? Let's find out. With its first picture of Neptune, the James Webb Space Telescope has done it again. The telescope is already famous for taking stunning pictures of the universe. The James Webb Space Telescope from NASA shows off its skills closer to home. Webb's cameras not only gave us the best view of the planet's rings in more than 30 years, but they also gave us new information about the ice giant. The most striking thing about Webb's most recent picture is how clear the planet's rings are. Some of these rings haven't been seen since NASA's Voyager 2 was the first probe to look at Neptune as it approached in 1989. The Webb picture clearly shows Neptune's fainter dust bands along with many bright, narrow rings. Heidi Hummel, an interdisciplinary scientist at Webb who studies the Neptune system, says it's been 30 years since we last saw these faint, dusty rings. This is the first time we've seen them in the infrared. Webb's very steady and accurate image quality made it possible to find these very weak rings so close to Neptune. Scientists have been fascinated by Neptune ever since it was found in 1846. Neptune is 30 times farther from the Sun than Earth and circles in a dark, faraway part of the outer solar system. It's like dull dusk on Earth when it's high noon on Neptune because the Sun looks so small and pale from so far away. This planet is an ice giant because of the chemicals that make it up. The gas giants Jupiter and Saturn have a lot less elements heavier than hydrogen and helium than Neptune. Due to small amounts of gaseous methane, Neptune appears blue in visible range Hubble Space Telescope pictures which can be easily seen. Webb's near-infrared. Camera, near cam, can only see things in the near-infrared range, which is between 0.6 and 5 microns. This is why Neptune doesn't look blue to it. In fact, the world is pretty dark at these near-infrared wavelengths because methane gas absorbs a lot of red and infrared light, except where there are clouds high in the sky. You can see these bright lines and spots of methane ice clouds because they reflect light before the methane gas takes it in. Picture taken over the years from other telescopes like the WW, these quickly changing cloud features have been caught by the MKEC Observatory and the Hubble Space Telescope. A thin line of light going around the equator of Neptune might be a more subtle way to see how the planet's winds and storms are affected by the global atmospheric circulation. The air pressure drops and warms up near the equator, making it lighter in infrared bands than the cooler gases nearby. Astronomers can't see Neptune's northern pole, which is near the top of this picture because of its 164-year orbit, but the Webb pictures show that it is brighter than usual there. Webb's picture clearly shows a vortex that was already known to be around the southern pole, but this is the first time Webb has shown a band of high-latitude clouds going all the way around it. Seven of Neptune's 14 known moons were also found by Webb. This Webb painting of Neptune is mostly made up of a very bright point of light, 
with distinctive diffraction spikes that can be seen in many of his pictures. The thing in question is not a star, though. It is Triton, Neptune's big and strange moon. Because it is covered in frozen condensed nitrogen, Triton reflects about 70% of the sunlight that hits it. Methane is much brighter than Neptune in this picture because it blocks light at these near-infrared wavelengths. Scientists think that Triton's strange backwards path around Neptune means that it was once a Kuiper Belt object that Neptune grabbed with its gravity. The James Webb Space Telescope has also taken its first pictures of Mars by carefully looking at infrared light coming from the planet. The Europlanet Science Congress, EPSC 2022, held on September 19, 2022, showed the world the first pictures and charts of Mars taken by the James Webb Space Telescope. JWST took the pictures and readings on September 5, 2022, from about 1.6 million kilometers, a million miles, away from Mars. It was Webb's near-infrared camera, NIRCAM, that took the pictures of Mars's observable disk, which is the side of the planet that faces the camera and is lit by the sun. They could give planetary scientists a new view of Earth's neighbor and send back data that can be used with studies made by rovers like NASA's. Perseverance and other objects in orbit around Mars. Since Mars is close and very bright, it is not the easiest thing for the JWST to see since it is meant to look at very far away and dim objects. Because the JWST can take pictures and spectra with the right level of detail, astronomers can study short-term events like dust storms, Martian weather trends, and even changes caused by the planet's seasons. With the Webb Telescope, scientists could also see things happening on Mars at the same time, including during the day, at sunset, and at night. In the first pictures of Mars taken by the JWST, the eastern region is shown in two different wavelengths of light. The short wavelength picture is mostly made up of reflected sunlight, which shows parts of Mars's surface that look like they would in visible light. Some of these features are the dark volcanic rock of the Sirtis Major Planum and the impact crater Huygens Crater, which is about 280 miles, 450 kilometers across. The NIRCAM camera on the Webb Satellite Telescope caught the longer infrared bands of light that Mars gives off when it loses heat. This light is the brightest and hottest where the Sun is almost directly above the planet. The temperature of Mars and its atmosphere is linked to this light. In the northern hemisphere of Mars, which is currently going through winter, and in the polar areas of Mars, which get less sunlight, the brightness goes down. But the temperature of the world is not the only thing that affects how much light gets to the JWST. The pictures from the telescope can also be used to figure out what chemicals are in Mars's atmosphere and surface. Scientists might be able to learn more about Mars's atmosphere and surface by looking at the range of light coming from the planet during the hottest part of the day using data from the James Webb Space Telescope. Based on a study of the JWST photos, the one 200 mile, 1930 kilometers, Hellas Basin appears darker than the areas around it. Light hitting Mars's atmosphere and being absorbed by carbon dioxide is what makes this impact structure look darker. The new pictures also show how the near infrared spectrograph, NIAR spec tools on the James Webb Space Telescope could be used to study Mars through a technique called spectroscopy. Spectroscopy lets planetary scientists figure out what a planet is made of by looking at the marks that different chemicals leave in the light coming from its atmosphere. Scientists have found spectral patterns that tell them about Martian dust, frozen clouds which make up the atmosphere, and the minerals that can be found on the surface. This is because different chemical elements absorb and give off light at different wavelengths. JGST readings should be able to pick up water, carbon dioxide, 
carbon monoxide, and other chemicals. Scientists study planetary bodies, and methane is important because it tells them about many natural processes happening on Mars, such as whether or not a big object has recently hit the red planet from space. Methane may also show that living things have been on Earth in the past. The Webb telescope also found the first clear sign of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of a world outside of our solar system. The find not only gives us interesting hints about how the exoplanet formed, but it also gives us a taste of what to expect as Webb looks into more and more planets beyond our solar system. The finds shown in a data plot aren't as beautiful as Webb's earlier pictures, which showed galaxies dancing in space and sparkling clouds in a star nursery. That being said, astronomer Jesse Christiansen of the NASA Exoplanet Science Institute at the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena says the results are beautiful. Scientists call WASP 39 BA Hot Jupiter because it has a width about the same as Jupiter, but orbits its star much closer than Mercury does the Sun, which makes it very hot. The plot, or spectrum, shows a lot of information about the exoplanet's atmosphere. The planet, which is more than 200 parsecs from Earth, was first seen in 2003 by researchers on the ground. Later, NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope, which was in use from 2003 to 2020, found it. The latter's results were not definitive, but they did make it more likely that WASP-39b's atmosphere has carbon dioxide in it. Then, Webb showed up. The infrared device watched the planet for a little more than eight hours on July 10th as it moved across the face of its star. During this time, sunlight got through the planet's atmosphere and was absorbed by specific molecules that emitted certain colors of infrared light. Hey. Scientists were not sure if carbon dioxide would show up as a noticeable blip in the spectrum. Natalie Batala is the team leader for Webb's transiting exoplanet early release science. She is a scientist at the University of California, Santa Cruz, UCSC. And there it was, just jumping off the computer screen, she adds. The results made people more sure that Webb would change the way we study extrasolar planets. The telescope is told to look at 76 other planets in space in its first year of use. Throughout its life, the number could hit hundreds. It will look through the atmospheres of small rocky worlds and gas giants that might be like Earth. Finding carbon dioxide, on the other hand, is huge. If a planet like Jupiter formed from the same disk of matter as its star, it makes sense to think that it would have the same chemical makeup as the star. However, this is not the case for WASP-39b or our solar system. Strong signals from the exoplanet's carbon dioxide show that it is full of heavier elements than the hydrogen and helium that usually make up stars. What's the matter at hand? After that, the story starts to pick up speed. When WASP-39b was young, it's likely that comets and asteroids hit it and brought stronger elements like carbon and oxygen with them. It's interesting to note that the world seems to have the same number of heavy elements as Saturn, which scientists think also had a rough childhood. On the other hand, WASP-39b might have formed from materials in the icy outer edges of its solar system before moving inward. It was close to its host star when it reached its final resting place. The star may have blasted away some of the hydrogen from the exoplanet's atmosphere, concentrating the heavier elements and adding carbon dioxide to them. Scientists are now working on four articles that will look at these options and the planet's spectrum in a lot more detail. The first thing that needs to be done to find life beyond Earth is to find carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of another world. Astronomers say that WASP-39b is too close to its star for life to exist there, and they don't think it will. Many people don't even think that the Webb telescope will find proof of life beyond Earth. 
An astronomer says that carbon dioxide and methane in a planet's atmosphere could be signs of life. Eventually, it's likely that we'll need a telescope a lot smarter than Webb to find life. But we need to get through this very important time in order to be ready for that technology in the future. The Hubble Space Telescope, on the other hand, has made a lot of progress in its quest to find out how fast the universe is growing, which fits with the idea that something strange is happening in the universe. Recently, astronomers have used telescopes like Hubble to get more accurate readings of how fast the universe is growing. But as these readings have become more accurate, they have also shown an oddity. There is a big difference between observations made now and observations made right after the Big Bang in terms of how fast the world is expanding. Scientists can't explain that difference, but it does suggest that something strange is going on in the universe, which could be caused by brand new physics that hasn't been found yet. Hubble has been collecting data on a set of space and time mileposts for the past 30 years. This data can be used to track the speed of the universe's growth as it gets farther away from Earth. NASA says that more than 40 of the marks have now been calibrated, which makes them even more accurate. Adam Ries, winner of the Nobel Prize and professor at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland, and the Space Telescope Science Institute, STSCI, said in a statement, you are getting the most accurate measure of the rate of expansion of the universe from the gold standard of telescopes and cosmic mile markers. Edwin Hubble, an American astronomer, noticed that galaxies outside of our own seemed to be moving away from us, and they were moving faster the farther away they were. This led to the search for an exact estimate of how fast space was expanding. Scientists have been trying to find a better reason for that growth ever since. Great things are being found right now, and we're here for all of them. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you like this video. Press the notification bell to get more interesting information. Thanks for seeing.